If I were to go get that bigger, older cow, it would just, in my opinion, completely screw up the entire herd dynamics and it'll just cause a big headache for myself. So one question that I get all the time, people messaging me, people commenting, people even emailing me, is how hard is it to actually move cows? And the simple answer to that is that it can be really hard or really, really easy like we have it here. These last couple mornings have actually been incredibly easy and I've gotten done way ahead of schedule or way ahead of my normal time for getting done with the normal, you know, move, moving the animals every day, chores if you want to call it it. Just so much more ahead to where I'm almost thinking, did I forget to do something? But the reality is, is with me having a year of experience under my belt, me with the systems I have in place now, and most importantly, the partners that I'm working with, I mean, it's so easy, it's so simple. I, it takes me maybe, you know, two minutes to move them. And when I say the partners that I have to work with, I really mean the cow. It's just me out here, Nicole's still asleep inside, and I'm just out here with 21 head of cows and I can move them like that. And what most people think is that I have to go move, you know, in this case, 21 head of cows. I don't have to move 21 head. I actually only really only have to move one. Now it just can't be anyone, it has to be a very specific one. And that's our lead cow, Betty. You see, it's almost been a year now that we got cows and the first three that we started off with was Betty, Yoli, and Daphne. And you see, the first couple days with them wasn't the easiest. I was learning them, they were learning me, and they were really learning to be a herd together. You see, those three cows are all half sisters. They all share the same daddy. Uh, Betty's the oldest one, then he goes Yoli, then Daphne. They're only maybe, three or four months apart. So you'd think that they'd already know how to be a herd together. The answer is no, is because where we got them from, they had, you know, 30, 40 other longhorns. And these are heifers, and in that herd, they were probably near the bottom of the pecking order because they were the younger ones. And all they'd really do there is follow their mamas, and the mama would follow that lead cow of that particular herd. So when we first got them and we put them in the corrals, there's a little bit of jockeying, and I wasn't really understanding why. They all knew each other from since birth. But they were in a new situation, they are in a new dynamic, and they needed to decide who was boss. Because with cattle, you have to have a boss. And the boss for our herd turned out to be our big white longhorn Betty. And as we've added new cows and grown our herd from zero to three to now 21 and two llamas, it's interesting to see how the herd dynamics change and how it's so important. That's something that's not really talked about, but I can't tell you how much of a significance it is for us here to you know understand those herd dynamics, especially, especially with us moving the cows every day, with us rotationally grazing, mob grazing, you know, whatever you want to call it, mig grazing, management intensive grazing, whatever you want to call it, moving the cows every day to new fresh pasture. I'm working with them for sure once, right now twice a day because we're getting two moves. So every time I move the cows, it can't be this big ordeal to where, you know, cows are moving, running one way and cows are running another way. You know, I need to go get help from other people to help corral them. I don't want to get on a four wheeler or a horse and try and, you know, wrangle them up and move them in one direction. That's just, it's just hard, too much time, too much stress on the animal, and too much stress on me. So what I did in the beginning was I worked really, really hard with our first three cows to train them to me and train them, okay, this is what moving looks like. Because they've never seen electric fence, they've never been moved, they were just turned out to pasture just like, you know, everybody else does it. So I really had to work to train them to our system. And what I did is I got some alfalfa pellets because those are, you know, alfalfa's grass. And those are like cow crack. Those three cows will come running from anywhere when I start shaking a bucket because they know, oh, you know what? That's candy. I was known as the candy man for the first little while because every day I'd go out there and I'd move them with an alfalfa pellet bucket. Now today, a year later, I don't use the alfalfa pellets really ever. If I have to do a really long move, I might do it. But even the really long moves that I've had to do, I'm not using it anymore. Why? Because one, it's a hassle. And then two, we have 21 head of cows and they all kind of know the bucket now, and it gets kind of crazy, and I just, uh, I don't like being out there with the horns, and them, you know, pushing and shoving and everything. I'll give it to them every once in a while as a treat. But by using that bucket, they learn that they're gonna get a treat, and then also they learn that they're gonna get fresh grass, is that's what they love. So those first three cows, I really, really worked with. And we had some issues with, you know, jumping the electric fences, going under it, blah, 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 blah. Just stuff that's as, as expected, okay? But you really can't do too much with just three cows. You wanna be able to expand. I didn't go and get more until I had those first three 
down, like completely down, to where they were completely comfortable with me, I was completely comfortable with them. When they saw me, they got happy because they knew something good was gonna happen. When I felt comfortable enough to get our second set of cows, see, I think you can see her. There's, there's Rose, and then Ellie's up there. Those are the two that we got. When we introduced them, there was some pushing and shoving, but they kind of figured out their own hierarchy, and that's what happens. But those two cows, I didn't have to work with as much to where I didn't have to go and worry, oh, are they out of the electric? Are they gonna learn it easy enough? Is it gonna be hard to move them? Why? Because they fell in, and Betty was still the lead cow. Betty knew what to do. They're gonna wanna be with other cows because they're herd animals, and they just followed Betty. Now they get it, they knew it. I think on that last move through, Rose and Ellie were the first two through, because they know when they see Ryan, he goes and moves the fences and calls us, something's good gonna happen. You see, Betty's role is just not, okay, that's the cow they follow. She also has the role of protecting her herd. When we had our five cows, we had like a little bit of an incident. Not a big incident, nothing happened at all. There was a little bit of an incident with the neighbor's cows to where the neighbor has, I don't know, maybe 60, 70 cows and you know he just lets them roam and they kind of move around wherever the land he owns or rents or whatever. Well, that herd of cows came up to the fence that one day where our herd, you know, was grazing where I had a move for the day and it was uh, it was like a standoff that happened it was really kind of weird you see that herd lead cow came up to the fence and started bellowing like crazy then right behind it in a line it looked like you know just one of those war movies to where okay you know what the armies are ready to charge at each other all the cows were behind that lead cow and you know they were they were angry they looked upset they were over there stomping their hooves they're huffing and puffing they were you know just you can just tell they were angry i don't know why they were angry or whatever was going on but our cows went over there to go see what was going on. Our cow Daphne, who's kind of lower on the pecking order out of those first five, went up to that lead cow and the lead cow kind of boom, butted her in the head like pretty good. I was like, dang, what the heck? I was just out there just seeing what was going on. And next thing you know, that happened. I was like, okay, what the heck? And Daphne kind of backed up because she was just being all nice and sweet. Daphne doesn't have a mean bone in her body. She just go lick on everybody and she's friends with everybody. And then out of nowhere, Betty comes charging up, she runs up to the fence, and she's a lot smaller than this lead cow, because these are longhorns, those are like Brangus or, you know, something. They're a lot bigger, I mean, 14, 1500 pound cows probably, okay? Betty at the time probably only weighed six, 700 pounds. She comes running up, right up to the fence. That other cow saw her running up and backed off. I was like, Oh wow, you know, there's, you know, 60 other cows behind her. I mean, you're really going to do this? I was worried that they're going to go through the fence cuz I mean, a barbed wire fence, a good tension barbed wire fence, doesn't matter, you know, what it is unless it's a brick wall. It really is just a suggestion, you know. Will it hurt the cows if they go through it? Sure. But it's just really a suggestion. Same thing with the electric. It's just a suggestion. So next thing you know, you have 60 whatever bigger cows on one side, and then you have our five longhorns kind of like in this V formation. It went Betty, Yoli, Ellie, Rose, Daphne, all just like, okay, we're ready to take you on. I'm going, come on, girls. You, you know, these, these are a lot bigger cows than you. This is not going to end well if, you know, they decide to go through the fence or you guys do it or whatever's going on. It's not going to go well. Sure enough, Betty's over there, moo, and then our cows just start going, you know, mooing like crazy, and they ran them off. I don't know if it's because I was out there too, might have been, but next thing you know, the cows turn away, and they all take off running. It was really weird, it was really cool, it felt like, you know, I'm Pony Boy, and we're ready to go get up for a fight, you know, or we're like the Avengers, and, you know, we're about to start charging at Thanos. But that's Betty's role as protector of the herd. She'll go out and charge, and having those long horns, really helps and plus longhorns are a lot smarter than any other cow i don't care what anybody else says they are really really smart but it's because of her that i've been able to bring on larger and larger groups of animals you know we went those three then two then another two and then six and then eight and the funny thing is is that three cows caused me a whole heck of a lot more problems than 21 and two llamas these guys are so gentle they're so tame they're so just in that routine of okay we know we're moving when we see ryan it's easy it's easy now is there squabbles always there's always squabbles between okay who's moving up like scarlet back here here she is raising that really long nice green grass she's moving up in the pecking order because she's actually put on quite a bit more weight 
than a lot of the other cows and she's just doing well and uh, our Charlotte Angus Cross sheep doesn't like it much so they'll have a little squabble and Ellie here who's much bigger has probably moved up to the third position but Scarlett has moved up some of the new cows over here they've uh they're kind of figuring out their own way see there's sheep that's who uh, uh, Scarlett is currently in a uh, kind of a a little thing with they kind of hang out near each other and then next thing you know they'll start headbutting out of nowhere why because they're trying to establish dominance and you can see they're about the same size uh, sheep might still be a little bit bigger but Scarlett has an advantage because she has the horns but it's actually been really cool to watch the herd develop because cows really do form friendships I don't care what anybody says I see it out here every day if I want to know where Rose is guess what all I have to do is look for Ellie why because they're always right next to each other if I want to find where Dolly is I go find sheep why always right next to each other you can see who's best friends with who and it actually freaks them out when they're separated away from their friends for example funny story last year we had a wild pig just come out of nowhere running Yoli was against the fence she jumped the perimeter fence yeah she jumped the perimeter fence and she got mixed in with the neighbor's cows it was a really weird you know instance where the pig ran right by her it startled her it came from the back and she just kind of jumped and she jumped over the fence because she got scared her best friend, her BFF, bovine friend forever, is Betty. Betty lost her mind. Betty lost her mind because Yoli got mixed in with that, that herd. They start button heads, and next thing you know, I go out there and try and get her back, and the whole, the, that whole other herd takes off running. It ended up being that Yoli ended up a mile and a half away, and I walked her all the way back with some alfalfa pellets. Yeah. That was pretty difficult. We got lost a couple times. We went through streams, we went through, we went over hills, we went through forest. It was just a whole ordeal. But that whole time, Betty, I could hear her all the way, bellowing like crazy. I had the electric fence set up. I had multiple paddocks set up, multiple paddocks energized actually. She just ran through it. She didn't care if she got shocked. She wanted to go be with her best friend or help her best friend or whatever. It's really kind of weird. But when you understand those herd dynamics, it makes things a lot easier. You see, when a cow comes into heat, they might not move normally. Why? Because they get a little kind of, you know, crazy because, you know, that's they're in heat. And they might not know what's happening because these are all heifers. They just get a little bit stubborn and they want to go where they want to go. So instead of me trying to go wrangle up that cow and it be just kind of an ordeal, I've learned that if I go get that cow's best friend, move, make sure that best friend moves. Guess what? That cow's going to come. That cow's going to come along. Don't try and push it. Leave the gate open to the next paddock and she'll come along. I've ended up having to do that more than a few times because when they come into heat, it's just, they just don't think. They only think about one thing and that's what's going on with them. And when you can just go get their best friend, they'll eventually calm down and they'll just come in the next paddock and it's no big deal. But it's just been really cool to develop this relationship with these cows to where, you know, some of them come up to me and I just go like this and they know that means that they're going to get scratches right behind their horns, which they love. If you're going to pet a cow right behind the ears, right behind the horns where they can't necessarily get with their foot, that's where you pet them. You'll be their best friend. Now, not all cows will do that. Betty won't let me touch her still, even though she's been with me almost a year and she trusts me fully. She just doesn't let me touch her. She doesn't like it. Whatever. I can pet Yoli and Ellie just stand right next to each other and they'll just stay here all day until I walk away because they love it. They know me. They trust me. But once you figure it out, once you know you're hurt, it just becomes really easy, really simple. I mean, it takes me two minutes a day to come out here and move the cows. It's just awesome. It's the thing that I get up in the morning and go, you know what? I get to go move cows today. That's cool. It's not like, oh, I have to go move the cows. You know, when it's raining, maybe it's not the most fun, but I wouldn't choose to do anything else. These cows get fresh pasture. They're moving away from their parasites. They're eating the breast primo grass. They're healing the land. I mean, it's just, you can't get better than that. If you can say that you're supposed to do something in life, I don't know if that's a thing or not. If you believe in that, this would be the thing that I'm supposed to do. I want to show you this. Check this out. We are not even in April yet, and check out the grass in this paddock. I mean, it is thick, it is lush, it is not 100% up yet, but it's more than other places. And this paddock here, I thought that this one is one that we're going to have to skip a little bit because I did unroll a lot of hay in here because our hay stack is right there and there's a gate and me not having a tractor, this is the easiest place that I can move it. Here is turning into one of our better pastures, that's for sure. I mean, look, we have grass 
that grass is probably almost a foot tall and it's not even April yet it's the end of March check that out you can see exactly where I unrolled the hay bale so much greener there and actually a lot thicker than everywhere else I thought we were gonna have to skip this but I'm learning the more hay that you can actually put down in one place you know smartly the better look at that look at this grass I can't believe this again the cows have already been in here for a little while and they've already grazed this once in springtime look at this grass this is crazy this is crazy look here it's my foot Wow enough with the grass it's back to what we were talking about the herd dynamics once you understand that don't mess it up once you got that under control don't mess it up one of the things that uh, I was considering but thought probably better against is getting other cows when we first got you know Betty Yoli and Daphne they were all heifers and since then I've been offered other longhorn cows like full-grown cows with the baby on the side but I said no to getting them and that's for a very specific reason because if I brought in a cow big full-grown longhorn cow that you know is maybe four five six years old and has the horns out to here especially with longhorns she who has the longest horns is going to be the lead cow kind of thing if I brought in that cow and her and Betty start pushing and shoving and Betty loses because she's got the smaller horns I might end up having a big problem on my hands I might have to retrain almost the entire herd to move in every day why because they're gonna look to that new lead cow I won't I will not do it I will not get a cow that's bigger than Betty why because I know Betty I trust Betty she knows me and it's so easy to move them if I were to go get that bigger older cow it would just in my opinion completely screw up the entire herd dynamics and it'll just cause a big headache for myself now some people might ask what about our bull what about our bull Jordan where does he fit in the bull he won't be the leader of the herd he'll be the protector of the herd but he won't be the leader of the herd why because his main job his main focus in life is to breed all the cows he doesn't care about being the leader he just cares about being around the cows now it's funny because him and Betty will go and play every day they butt heads they butt heads they butt heads and you know he's still a little bit smaller he can't you know one up Betty just yet and eventually he's gonna be bigger than her he's gonna be the biggest baddest guy around here but he will still look to Betty as the lead cow so as long as she moves he'll move and with him he's not aggressive he, I haven't seen any kind of you know even horn waving at me if anything he just he likes me he comes up to me he knows the bucket better than anybody else because I think the previous owners really kind of fed him a lot of grain I don't know about that he came here in not the best shape he came here in not the best shape pretty skinny uh, I bought him as the bull said let's see what he turns into and worst comes to worst we'll steer him he ended up looking just perfectly so far so far so good he just got to go and get the job done now that he's getting a little bit taller so that's gonna be cool but what I'm gonna be doing with him and the new steers is come April 15th I'm actually gonna be separating him and the new steers away from the herd for about a month and that's to take us out of winter calving I don't and when I say winter calving here in East Texas it's the you know last part of uh, it's the last part of January, the first part of February. We want to stay out of completely because of that snow apocalypse that happened. It scared me two feet of snow, negative two weather. That's not a good situation for a calf to be born into. And the gestation period will put us late February when we put them back in in May. But with me reintroducing that herd, I'm not going to worry about the herd dynamics getting messed up. Why? Because Betty will still be on top, healed, no matter how big he gets in a month, not going to try and take over that lead position. But also when I separate the herd, I talked about the cows having best friends kind of thing tiger and rusty our first two steers they came with ruby strawberry and scarlet all in one batch they're still very close with those three other heifers of ours I'm not gonna separate them out I'm gonna leave them here why because putting rusty and tiger in with the new steers it's gonna put some stress on them because they want to get back with their friends I mean it's funny you'll see the the way that the cows move the caboose is always rusty strawberry ruby and sometimes tiger and why is that I don't know it's just the way it goes it usually goes Betty and the first five then come sheep and Dolly and Scarlet the llamas are always mixed in there somewhere when they're with the herd Jordan's always up in the top then it's the new steers and then 
it's those four. It's really weird. It's just really weird. They get into a routine and that's the way they do things. I'm not going to argue with them because it works for us here. I don't know about you, but I think that's one of the prettiest things in the world. Seeing the Longhorns graze, the prettiest cow, the smartest cow, the most docile cow. And I know each and every one of them extremely well now. It's funny, when there's an issue, when there's a little bit of a problem, when one of them's not cooperating, when one of them's out, I usually know who it is, I know what they're gonna do, and now I feel really confident in knowing how to solve that quick little problem. But right now, there's usually not any problems, it's so easy. And with me, I attribute that to knowing the dynamics of our herd, and as long as I don't mess with those dynamics, it's gonna be the same, and I expect it to be just even easier as we go along. So with that, hit the subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell to get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and drop a comment if you like. All right, until next time, see ya, bye. Come on, cows. Come on, cows, cows, come on. Come on, cows. Come on, cows, cows, come on. Come on, cows. Come on, cows, cows, come on. Come on, cows. Come on, cows, cows, come on. Come on, cows. Come on, cows, cows, come on. Come on, cows. 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 Come